Welcome to EdTech Weekly, Voices from the Ground, where we talk to people in education about their responses to the current COVID-19 crisis in 10 short minutes. Over to our host for today. Hi, I'm Jennifer, your host for today. I am an educator and researcher. I'm speaking to Dhanashri Yedandi, the school's leader and coordinator at Muktangan Education Trust. Muktangan is a Mumbai-based organization that draws its teachers and school leaders from local underserved communities that they work with. Dhanashri mentors, guides and heads leadership of seven English medium schools run in partnership with the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai. Dhanashri has been a teacher and a school leader for over 15 years. Hi Dhanashri, thank you for speaking with us today. Hi Jennifer. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so Dhanashri, uh, can you tell us a little about your context in Muktangan? Your students and teachers come from neighborhoods in Verli, which was declared a red zone pretty early during the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, how has this situation impacted uh, everyone's daily lives and how has this impacted you all as a school community? Yeah, to tell about Muktangan, Muktangan is an NGO working in the education sector since 2003. Uh, we work with the BMC's municipal schools in the South Ward. Uh, and, and we also have a teacher training center. To the impact, of, yeah, as you correctly said, we are uh, surrounding the areas that are very declared as red zones for the COVID-19. Uh, it has impacted to a large extent on the teachers and parents living around. Most of our parents are daily wage workers, taxi drivers and vegetable vendors. Their livelihood depends upon the daily earnings, which has come to still with this lockdown. So many of our students and staff also reside in chores where they share common toilets, which is a major concern for their safety. They are a bit tense, but they are all working through it. Yeah. And what has this meant for you all as a school community? Yes, actually when this uh, corona crisis strikes, more than academic, our main objective was to divert the students' attention from the lockdown, to support the students, to boost their morale and to keep them engaged. Hence, the assignments and activities we planned were keeping in mind the social emotional well-being of the students as well as the parents because right now they are all in locked inside the house. So the activities allow students to share their experiences and express their feelings through writing, drawing, recording. They are watching small audio clips, thus encouraging and enabling them to vent out. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I also heard that you all were uh, sending a lot of uh, worksheets and things like that by WhatsApp. Can you very briefly tell us what exactly you all did? Yeah, uh, immediately after we got to know that the schools will be shut down, the teachers, as I mentioned, we have a teacher child ratio of 1 to 15. The teachers individually call these 15 children on their contact number. First of all, taking asking them about their well-being, their current status, and briefly making, creating WhatsApp groups which allow them to uh, have access to the sheets or small activities that the teachers are sharing, thus enabling them to have that access and uh, participate in the school academics and thus diverting them from the current scenario. Okay. And uh, what has this uh, rapid transition to phone-based learning meant for teachers? I mean, we're also used to teaching in classrooms. Uh, I'm yeah. sure this shift is not easy. So how are they managing their home and work? And as a school leader, what did you do to prepare all of them for this uh, quick transition? Yeah, initially they were a little dazzled, but eventually they are becoming comfortable with it. Uh, it is a challenge for the teachers to manage their home and work in the current scenario as they have to balance two different tools in the same setup. 
but with little flexibility in time timing and support from the seniors they are able to manage it we have requested even the senior t a senior uh, faculty to see to because when we are paying attention more to the children's well being the same applies for our teachers and staff right. to see and to check majority of them to uh, have a conversation with the teachers and find a suitable timing we have a curriculum understanding development meeting so the meetings are uh, fixed at a, a time where all the teachers are comfortable all subjects were manageable to some extent but beyond a particular point each one was feeling restricted so this is this is a new experience for them they were never used to teach online or through whatsapp teachers are Uh, doing their best in this small in their small houses also they are finding a space to record their video teaching while teaching and sending it across so that it will help the children to get something but still we are still we feel restricted so we'll see how it helps okay what other tools are you using are you using only whatsapp for communication currently yes to an extent access is an issue some of them do not have smartphone and the ones who have smartphones are running out of data mm-hmm. most of the parents do not know how to recharge the prepaid cards online and due to lockdown there is no other source available to recharge so they are struggling with it uh, and most of the children like now if the scenario is we cannot even tell the children that you can go to that particular child and share the homework all those things are happening mm-hmm. so for the ones like for uh, lrg children the learning uh, resource group children the children with learning dyslexia and all that that particular team is individually calling them and supporting them uh, like with audio clips or taking them uh, on the conference call and giving them a verbal oral activities where they listen and then they give the answers basically the purpose as i tell you is keep the children engaged and divert from the current scenario so we are doing as much as possible but this a uh, incident has let us to think beyond our capacity how can we can be prepared for even the different scenarios mm-hmm. upcoming scenarios Yeah. yeah like you rightly said the future is looking very uncertain right now mm-hmm. and uh, as a school leader how, what are you doing what is your plan to continue these teaching learning activities from june uh, in case schools don't reopen are you all working on first, a plan uh, yeah. first of all we all are, all are praying for the schools to reopen in june but it doesn't look like that yeah. this current scenario but this experience has taught us to be prepared for the unexpected circumstances senses whatever we plan for the next year regarding teaching learning practices we need to have a backup plan if this uh, continue if this lockdown continues this is the time in the month of may where we can brainstorm and think about the possibilities how to reach these children in a better way So my last question for uh, today is I want you to fill in the blank uh, after this pandemic if there's one thing that changes in education I hope it is our approach towards the teaching learning process we need to promote active learning in students where the students instead of simply listening and memorizing they start to apply the concepts in their day to day life thank you dhanashri thank you for tuning in we will be back with a new episode next week this podcast is brought to you by the connected open online learning initiative of the tata institute of social sciences mumbai